minded enough to be one of the foremost scientific centers on cannabis research in the world. And I'll, I keep saying his name wrong, but Dr. Raphael McQuillan, uh, I don't know, it's on the handouts. Um, <laughs> and the handouts, by the way, and I, I'm still not getting my, my PowerPoint presentation, they're available on the web pages. If you go into the photo gallery, the, all the lectures have got um, about 10 uh, pictures and, uh, and there's all sorts of other stuff in there. Anyway, 1963 was when um, he first discovered THC. Now THC is an exocannabinoid. And uh, it was something that uh, he you know, was uh, uh, trying to discover uh, the active ingredient. It turns out there's like a lot more than THC that they needed to consider. But at first, uh, as with many things, you, you always think that there's one easy answer and it's just never that way. THC is critical though. That's to be sure, it has many different benefits aside from the pain-killing benefits. It appears to have anti-inflammatory benefits and antibiotic benefits. And it's really hard to distinguish at a point all the things THC is directly responsible for. It has a certain amount of muscle relaxing uh, capacity as well, but there's other cannabinoids I'm going to explain um, that, that are also very beneficial. But anyway, the first one found again 1963 was THC. So the progression was simply, uh, we now know what is in the plant, the, this you know chemical that is causing most of the pharmacological effects. So now we need to find out how and why it works because it seems to have a very dramatic impact. And what they discovered was that we have neotransmitters um, they call them, for short, CB1 or CB2. But they're essentially all throughout our body in almost every system that we have, from our skin to our gastrointestinal system, our respiratory system, our reproductive system, our nervous system, our skeletal system. Just about every system has got these, I'll call them sort of like baseball gloves, these neotransmitters that will only allow certain chemicals essentially to bond with them. And if you don't have that perfect kind of fit, you know, like if you take a, a baseball glove and get it wet when it's brand new and put a, a ball in it and you can form it to fit that ball. Well, if it doesn't fit, then it's not gonna, it, it's gonna bounce off the neotransmitter essentially. And so um, they found that, you know, THC bonded to all these different receptors and there's clusters of them in our brain, in our frontal lobe where we do a lot of our higher thinking, there's clusters in our memory, in our motor skills uh, sort of area at the top of our spine, um, a few other places scattered without but the you know it's, it's everywhere but like I say there's these real clusters where there's a lot of these receptors and so um, they're like wow Everybody has these, like, you know, in every system of their body almost. This is amazing. We thought people were getting high, but it seems like it's interacting everywhere. What's going on? So then um, they're thinking, well, there must be something naturally produced in the body that would be, uh, you know, working uh, with these neotransmitters. So, um, I forget what year it was, 92 he discovered what he termed anandamide. Um, the Sanskrit, um, I, I think for ananda, is uh, bliss. Um, and so um, he uh, understood that the pain-killing mechanisms of THC, which I think was what he was really looking for, like some of the other benefits might not have been as well known, but it's like, okay, this kills pain, and it's the THC that does it, was, uh, and, and so, Amandamide is essentially our, our body's hormone that we produce um, to subdue pain and a couple of other things, but certainly that's its, its primary function. And so essentially we've come to learn that if you're, say, playing rugby and you hit your knee, what you do uh, as, as your immune system's response is uh, on, on a few levels. On one level, you release amandamide. It goes to your knee, attaches to neotransmitters, and dulls the pain. 
It also goes to your brain, attaches to neurotransmitters and dulls your brain's ability to feel that pain. Most drugs, most opiates, just go straight to your brain. Right? They don't have any impact on the injured part of your body. Your body also releases anti-inflammatories, muscle relaxants as well. And so um, if you've injured your knee enough that it isn't able to kind of heal itself, well then you're going to be hurting after the game. Sometimes you can have an injury, as, as I've had, and you don't actually feel it until you touch it. And it's like, holy shit, I'm swelled there. Well, that's because you're releasing so many anti-inflammatories and painkillers and stuff that you have effectively been able to block it out through the use of endocannabinoids, which is what amandamide is. I don't know. I won't say it right in the whole class, but anyway, um, I don't know the terms for all of the other uh, endocannabinoids as they're generally referred to, but there are hundreds, thousands of different endocannabinoids, and they all work with your various systems, your various, you know, and your bodily functions. And I, I've. Oh. Are they all inside the like, cannabis plant themselves? No. Or, okay. okay, and I'm going to. The reason I put this up here is because I'm going to try to break it up into talking about exo and endocannabinoids. So I think I'm going to stick with endocannabinoids for a bit, and then I'll get to exo, and then I'll talk about some of the research we're doing to try and tie it up. But time's going quick. <laughs> so uh, the, the endocannabinoid system is, is fascinating. If you have a, a chance to watch any uh, film footage or otherwise meet Dr. Rel Robert Melamed in person, he actually teaches an entire semester on endocannabinoids because the field uh, has exploded in the last five to seven years since they've discovered them. Because each one of these endocannabinoids um, is designed to effectively um, bring your body's systems to what they call homeostasis or, or, or kind of a, a, a balance. Um, and the best example that Dr. Bob, as he's known, uh, used or that I've heard was your temperature. Okay, um, your body's temperature isn't exactly 98 degrees all the time. It's usually going up a little bit or coming down a little bit. So you know, if you get too hot, you can remove clothes or whatever. You know, there's ways to manage it, but uh, you know, it's it's kind of you know this little ebb and flow. You know, and so. Your body actually re releases an endocannabinoid if your temperature is going higher than desired. And uh, 